Joining us now is Ernie Panacoli, I, and I'm excited because this book is his. This big, beautiful, thick, gorgeous, um, fantastic hip hop at the end of the world. Ernie put this together. He's a photographer. Ernie, how are you? I'm good, thank you, Donna. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to have you here. This book is like, like heavy. It is hearty. This is fantastic. This obviously is a labor of love celebrating the 50th birthday of hip hop. Um, so brother Ernie, um, thank you. And you also sent me this book and you autographed it for me. Can I tell you how precious this is to me that even though you're where you are and I'm here, it's still like so tangible that you're a part of me. So thank you so much. I, I just love this. So thank you. It means a lot to me. Um, so thank now you. hip hop, you're welcome. Hip hop, you, everybody loves you. I'm like, you are the photographer of hip hop, public enemy, Biggie, <laughs> Queen Latifah, Missy Elliott. The list goes on and on. But I want to start at the point of something really cool, and that is that you're part of the permanent collection at Cornell. So how did that come about? What, what, how did that happen for you? Wow, that's a heck of a question. Um, they were aware of me, and several other universities were aware of me. However, Cornell was wise enough to want to incorporate my work into their rare books and manuscripts archive. When I went up there to look at my work in the archive, sitting next to me is a handwritten copy of the Gettysburg address. And next to that is a parchment from a pharaoh in Egypt. So trust me, uh, I'm in good company, and it was very humbling, very humbling. Ernie, your camera and your lens, I'm sure it's gotten you into so many doors, but I want to ask you a question. Has it ever helped you get out of a door? Meaning, like, has your camera... <laughs> yeah, you see where I'm going with that, right? Like, hip-hop... <laughs> can get you in the door and you're taking some pictures, but I want to know, has your camera ever rescued you and helped you get back out the door? I was at the Apollo and I was shooting Big Pun and Fat Joe and se several people came around me and pushed me and started cursing and they were not in a good frame of mind. And I looked around and I saw who was obviously the brighter of the crew. And I went up to him and I'm a big guy. You can't tell from me sitting down. And I looked at him, I looked him in the eyes and I asked him, do you have a sister? And he says, yes, I have a sister. I said, did you used to have posters on your wall? He said, yes, I used to have posters on my wall. And no one around us knew where I was going with this. I said, when your sister was mad at you, did she rip up your posters? He said, yes, how'd you know that? I said, just answer the questions. And I said, did she rip up your posters? He said, yeah. I said, guess who shot those posters? And he looked at me and he couldn't believe what had just happened. Now it's me against 14 guys. Wow. And then he looked at me and he said, wow, you shot all those? I said, yes. And he told all the people around him, he says, be around this guy. Don't let anybody touch him. He's our brother. And for the wow. rest of the concert, which is about two hours, they sat around me like, you know, my personal bodyguards. So yes, hip hop has gotten me and my photography has gotten me out of situations. And that's just one of many. And I uh, love that. that's an excellent question. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, hip hop, one of the things that I also read about you in your bio is the fact that one of the things that you enjoy doing is that you like almost like curating images, if you will, to preserve them of cultures that are somehow not represented or underrepresented. It, is that something that you've always loved, like from the early moment of, you know, getting your first camera was kind of documenting culture and documenting important things? It always bothered me that the one time you saw certain people on TV was in handcuffs. 
And I knew and lived around and lived with many of those same people. And it just distressed me that uh, growing up, because I'll be 76 next month, um, it just distressed me that a whole segment of our people are not represented visually. And I made a promise that not only would I represent the unrepresented, but be a voice of the voiceless and, uh, you know, said that I would make them look iconic because in my eyes, many of them were iconic. They absolutely are. And a lot of your images also helped with their fame. You know, when you yes. were able to capture their essence, and like you said, you could make them have that iconic look or that moment, you know, and you lit them in such a way, it made them bigger than life, right? Almost at the same time that their music was making them bigger than life. It's like they works one hand in hand, I think, a lot. Legends are created and evolve and are not just randomly uh, titled as legends. Legends are some people who either do something totally new or do something old in a new way. And prior to hip hop, I had photographed Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett, Liza Minnelli. There, there was a whole list of people prior to hip hop. And I even photographed Menudo, which was the first boy band and they were Puerto Rican boy band. So uh, my history goes deeper than hip hop, but I think hip hop was uh, something that gave a voice to the voiceless and I was blessed to have been there. And I learned and I shared what I knew. Some of the things that I really like is the way that you incorporate, I guess, the visual backdrop or the background, like it's the vehicle, it's the wall, it's the special staircase. You know, you have such an eye for that. It's almost like you're you're putting together a painting or a, a permanent image, if you will, but you're curating every single element. Did you realize when it wasn't just the subject, but that it was also the background that mattered to you? Like when did you start developing that look or that style? From the beginning, because if you look around me, you know, here, here's me, and yet there's a whole world around me. Why exclude that? Okay. Unless you were trying to make a point as to the power of the, the energy of a person, uh, which sometimes does detract from you know, the image. You just got too much going on. So uh, <laughs> a lot of times I would photograph the person up close and personal, and then uh, other times, I would uh, make, excuse me, I was just looking for something. It's it's not here, but uh, uh, there's a way to do things that are really stark where you just have the power to image and, you know, the, the link in the eyes. And there are other times where you want to create, you have to capture all that craziness, all that beauty, all that chaos, the trains, uh, you know, the, the graffiti, the, the, uh, crazy hairdos, you have to incorporate that because a uh, hundred years from now, people, that's what people will be looking at, not just the face. Yeah. I mean, it's really nice. And the way that you, I guess, almost, I, I don't even know how you do this because you're magical. Okay. You're just magical, but it's almost <laughs> as if you're capturing them when they're not posing. You're getting that beat either right before their smile or after their smile. And it's just, it's stellar because it just seems like they're in their, in their moment. You're, you've got a really great talent for capturing somebody in their moment. Um, and they're funny. Just, and like, the just like you. Aw. Just Thank like you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I, you know, I, I, like, I like having these conversations with people. I don't like coming in with all these questions. I like it to be conversational. So is that what you mean by that? Because look at this picture with all the grills and the diamonds and like every single one of these moments are just he's, he's, lovely. He's a famous actor now. He's part yes. of the Wu-Tang. He's, he's in, so he was in The Wire. He's in several TV series and he's a famous actor now. And I caught him just as a rapper. Um, in that book, there's a secret, there's a key to the whole book that nobody knows about. 
It's page 302 and 303. It's called Pulling the Trigger. And it will reveal everything all the way at the end, all the way at the end, Pulling okay. the Trigger. And okay. when, all the way, 302, 303, got it. or 303. Got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, I got right it. That's, okay. That's the key to the entire book. And they did a painting of me as Moses. But uh, I see that. <laughs> that's that's another story. But when I read Pulling the Trigger, uh, a friend I know in Detroit wrote it and sent it to me, and I had tears coming down my eyes. Jessica Care uh, Moore. Jessica Care Moore wrote a poetic tribute to Brother Ernie. You know what? This is this is beautiful. And you're right. And it's, you know, hip hop sometimes uh, has a mystique about it, if you will. And I think it's so lovely because you brought the heart right through this book of the beauty and the joy. And uh, I don't know, you're super talented. And it's exciting to know you. It says that you've taken over 250,000 images you know, and like you said, you're you're in the permanent archives of Cornell. Uh, what are you shooting now? What, what's, you know, oh, wait, I have one other question too, Ernie. Well, not, I have a few, maybe two or three more questions, but I want to know, <laughs> I want to know if you were like originally developing, did you have your own dark room in the early days? No. Okay. I, so you um, always had somebody process I, your I images for you. I did not because I was shooting too much. And for me to have a dark room, I would spend all the time in a dark room. Uh, I did not. I did some, but very little. Uh, I'm also a painter, a sculptor, and uh, a lecturer. And okay. I traveled all over the world doing lectures. So those are the other parts of the puzzle. So you probably appreciated the fact when I said that it was almost like a sculpture with you adding in the elements and things. Or, or being a painter, because I do see that. I went to art school and and I could just pick up your book and as I'm going through all of these images, I, I see your artistry and it's so beautifully expressed. So congratulations. Um, and then now we're gonna go Thank forward. You. So what are you shooting next? You know, what's your next assignment? <laughs> <laughs> during COVID, during okay. COVID, I had a lot, as we all did, I had a lot of free time and a lot of long days and long nights. And I created a body of work called Stark. And right now I'm looking for a book publisher, but I'm just telling you uh, to keep your eyes open because Stark will be a revelation in both. Uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to perform a wedding between art photography and hip hop and those three elements as you know the the people being or the creatures being wedded and there's always been at most two of those there's never been three and i think stark will be uh the next natural progression and it'll marry hip hop photography and art which i think is a, a marriage that's long long overdue beautiful um Thank I could you. show you a picture. I could show you a picture from Stark, but I don't know. Uh, maybe another time. But Stark is Stark is my next project. And I thank you, Donna. I had a radio show, and I know how hard it is to get into people's heads, and uh, them not showing up, and all the technical glitches and so on. So I doubly honor you because, as I said, I had a radio show. And that taught me a lot about human nature and about interviews and about getting into people's minds and uh, having them reveal their desires, their fears, their comforts and discomforts. So uh, you have a blessed job and you do it beautifully because you are always upbeat and I love it. If you get a chance, go to YouTube. I have a video there and it's called Thank You. And I think it'll uplift you. It's called Thank You. And thank you, Ernie. That was beautiful. You made me a little teary. See my green eyes? If you were capturing them with your lens right now, they got that little glaze on them. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting you in person someday. And thank you so Please. much. Thank you so very Please. much. And Please. this book means a lot to me. And I've been bragging about it. I'm like, look what he wrote in the back cover. So anyway, happy journeys to you. And we'll, and we'll look forward to Stark. And when we'll invite you back on. And when you're ready to do something about that, let's, let's chat about that as well, okay? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Happy journeys. Be well. Bye-bye.